who's joined us in the Herald offices today to talk about his tour, The Makings of a Murderer, which is running up and down the UK at the moment. Um, what can people expect when they come along to your show? Well, I'm not going to go and everything, give everything away, um, but one thing I would say is there is a fascination for true crime, serial killers, murderers, crime in general. But there's also sometimes too much of a focus on the killer. So the balance that I have is let's never forget about victims. And we should never forget about these killers and what they've done, but we should never forget about what they've done to the victims. And it, it's an interesting, really exciting and fascinating show. Uh, and I touch on, I touch on high profile cases throughout the UK. I touch on a few Scottish cases and there's certain themes that feature throughout that. And you talk about true crime and the interest, the fascination and the people that really delve into cases, cold cases. Um, what kind of questions do they ask you and are you quite surprised by some of them? Well, what I'm surprised is the size of the audiences that have been coming to the uh, venues. I mean, some of them in the Aberdeen one, there was 1,700 people there. In Liverpool, there was 1,300 people. In Manchester, when we opened it, over 1,200. So it's huge audiences, huge amounts of people interesting. And the people, you know, the, the, there's a perception, the true crime audience, they're just focusing on the killer and the horrors of it. A lot of the people that come have got a genuine interest in why a killer does what they do. There's professionals come. There's former police officers, there's serving police officers, there's people in the, the health board. There's prison officers, there's journalists, there's loads of people come to it and it, there's an interest in it. And the questions are varied. The questions are about the killer, why they do it. The questions are about me. You know, how do I cope? How did I cope with it? What was the, the, one of the most difficult cases that were involved? And the other one is, how do I feel dealing with murders? Well, of course, you you're, you had a 30-year-plus career with Scotland's biggest police force, um, covering and working on many high-profile cases, uh, one of which was the operation which led to snaring serial killer Peter Tobin. Um, from your experience, um, what would you say, or, or is there a, a time that you can pinpoint when people become inherently bad or a serial killer, or, or what leads them to it? Yes, I was in the... Strathclyde Police, as it was known then, for 34 years, uh, and uh, I dealt with literally hundreds of murder investigations in my career. And I'm still, you know, after I've left the police, and I don't like that word, retired, I'm, I'm still using my skills to help families, victims that are killed abroad, like the Kirsty Maxwell case, the death in Benidorm, and the murder of Craig Marlon in Spain. So for me, I'll probably never stop doing what I'm doing, because it's been able to help people but there's always that thing, is a killer born evil? And that's something that sometimes I say yes. But then there's a the complicated issues about nature and nurture. Is that, is it their surroundings? Are they born evil or do they develop evil? Well, there's quite a lot to speak about in the show. So what I would say to people is come along to the show and you'll see me explaining more on that. And I'll be putting quite a lot, it's, it's quite interactive, there's videos on it. And what we encourage is people to send in the messages on social media and they get that before the before they start and they can see some questions that are asked or at the break. And uh, people are fascinated, but they're fascinated by the complexities of why, why someone kills. And I'm sorry, but, you know, I have never grasped it. I've never understood why one human being kills another human being. Mm -hmm. And, and I know that one element of the show touches on what is described as no-body murders. And there have been a few cases which have led to successful convictions in Scotland where we haven't had a victim's body. Um, but also, I understand there's a difference between down south and Scotland and in terms of parole for that kind of case. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? One of the things I speak about is no-body murders. There's, a few, there's been quite a few no-body murders in Scotland. Um, the, the Peter Tobin case, you know, okay, we found the bodies, two of the bodies, but Tobin has definitely killed other people, I've no doubt about it. Um, there's other high profile cases, Suzanne Pilly in the East Coast, there's Margaret Fleming in Inverkip, um, there's um, 
Alison McGarry in the in Largs, and there's Rene McCrae, and there's the, the, the Nat Fraser case. These bodies have never been found. Mm-hmm. That's people that love ones. People that are wondering what happened, where they know their loved ones were killed, where's the bodies? And there's a campaign uh, in England, quite a strong campaign, and it's got a lot of traction. Helen's Law, where Helen was a young woman that was killed uh, by an individual sim some years ago, and uh, he was sentenced to life. And her mum, Marie McCourt, has been campaigning for this, and it's simply no body, no parole. Now, he was released from prison, and then he died. So he's taking the secrets, like Tobin, like Ian Brady, the, the, mm-hmm. the Moore's murderer, taking the secrets to the grave where the bodies are. And that's the same with all these other people that are convicted. Now, in Scotland, there has been some activity around about called Suzanne's Law in relation to the Suzanne Pilly murder. This is a woman, a young woman that was tragically killed and murdered in uh, the east coast uh, of Scotland. And, and I believe that there has been some activity by uh, government people and other members of the family to try and push to get that in Scotland, Helen's Law. But as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been much progress with that. So the Helen's Law one keeps pushing. And, and actually during the tour, during the show, I mentioned Helen's Law. I put that up on the screen. I put a, a, a picture of uh, Helen. I put a picture of the campaign, you know, screenshots from the, the newspaper articles. Uh, I had spoken to uh, Helen's family and said, look, would you, be like, would you like us to bring that up at the tour? Absolutely. So I'm going around the UK raising awareness of that. And it would be great if there was something in relation to Suzanne's law. Um, because, you know, there's well-intentioned work being ongoing. And, I, and I'm aware that it has been discussed by uh, some MSPs. I think Jamie Green uh, has raised that in his victim's law. But hopefully, hopefully there's a lot of change. There is a lot of change in Scotland as regards the government and policies. So hopefully there'll be a change regarding the victim's law and Helen's law. And and as you as you mentioned, you know, victims there. Um, for every for every killer you've caught, there is a victim and there's a family left behind. Um, is that why something that if there was to be a change with nobody murders in Scotland, that that it could just help give a family some kind of comfort at what is the darkest time in their lives? We should never forget for every one of these killers, these horrible killers, there's victims. Mm-hmm. And in the case of serial killers, there's more than one victim. And we should never forget the victims and the families. And that is a big thing. And, and I remember when, uh, as a result of Operation Anagram, which we created in relation to the activities of Peter Tobin, and that resulted in uh, finding Vicky Hamilton and Dynamite Nicol, two missing people. Vicky Hamilton, a missing person from Bathgate in the 19, early 90, 1990, and Dynamite Nicol went missing down in the home counties in England and their bodies were found buried in a garden in Margate and Kent. Now the families were ever so grateful in the courts, on Crime Watch, in the media. It gives us a sense of closure, being able to bury someone. Mm. And for me that's strong words, strong words. And that is the thing, and, and I always remember Ian McNichol, Dynamite Nichols' dad, saying, you will never know what it's like unless it happens to you. 